Hi guys and welcome to a new Boy Reads World video. Today I'm doing a book haul which is probably my first book haul in half a year because I made a promise to myself that I would reduce my actual TBR because I have around 50, 60, 70 books on my shelves that I haven't read yet and I thought let's bring that number down a bit so I can justify buying books again and let's say that I did reduce it a bit but not buying books is hard guys so yeah I caved for those of you who saw my September wrap up uh, you might remember that I went to see Hanya Yanagahara talk about a little life in Brussels the other day and I had a few hours to kill so I went and uh, visited a few books shops bookshops not bookstops bookshops and one of which was uh, the only watchstones that we have in Belgium and I was like a kid in a candy store there because uh, yeah, a lot of books that haven't been released in Belgium yet they have there so I went on a bit of a shopping spree which resulted in this book haul uh, the first book that I bought which wasn't in Waterstones was Night Film by Marisha Pestel I already read uh, Special Topics in Calamity Physics by her which I enjoyed the writing style but Somewhere halfway in the book, I just completely uh, lost it because, I don't know, it all became so improbable and, yeah, just not believable anymore and, yeah, but, uh, like I said, I, write, I like her writing style, so I'm willing to give her another chance and this is also very beautifully published, so, yeah extra incentive to buy it. Then another one that is also very beautifully published is uh, The Line of Beauty by Alan Hollinghurst. I've only read one other book by him, The Swimming Pool Library, which I really loved and included in my four LGBT books that you should read, which I'll link down below. And this is of course his Man Booker winning novel about uh, being gay and the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s during the reign of Margaret Thatcher in uh, England. And this is about uh, a guy who uh, gets swept up by the London elite of that time but is obviously gay and has to deal with yeah his friends dying and yeah, the, the Im imminent threat of yeah, catching AIDS at any time, well, that sounds a bit ominous, um, well, you know what I mean, uh, AIDS in the 80s, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Talking about the Man Booker Prize, when I walked into another store, there was a table with the six shortlisted books for this year's Man Booker Prize, and the one that spoke to me most was All That Man Is by David Saloy. This is what it says on the tin, it's about uh, masculinity and what it means to be a man in... Uh, today's society and this is from the point of view of uh, nine different men who are all uh, at a different stage in the life the youngest one is in his teens and the oldest one is uh, 70 80 I, I haven't really checked and they're all in different places in Europe none of them is actually at home they're all traveling for various reasons I think this is going to be a, a, an interesting point of view from solely male protagonist which of course, there are plenty of books which have only male protagonists, but uh, yeah, uh, the thing that what defies masculinity really intrigues me, so I'm hoping to find out in this book. Then we come to the portion that I bought in Waterstones, and the first one was The Unlucky Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. This was one that I saw way back when on uh, Jen Campbell's channel. I've had my eye on it since then, and then I saw it on the half uh, price table, so yeah, I had to buy it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is about Harold Fry, who uh, leaves his house to go to the mailbox uh, to post a letter, and then suddenly decides to just bring the letter himself to the person that he uh, wants to post it to, which apparently lives on the other side of the country. So, it's gonna be a long walk. Then another one who is also going to be a light read, I think, and that's one that has been uh, shortlisted for the Bailey's Prize this year, and that's The Improbability of Love. Another one that I saw on several uh, booktube channels, and uh, the thing that uh, spoke to me most about this book is um, the improbability of love is actually a painting uh, about which his book is about and uh, the painting has his own thoughts 
so he is uh, quite snarky and snobby. Like I said, a light read which I could use at the moment because I'm in a bit of a slump. Then a book that definitely doesn't qualify as a light read and that's uh, The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. Uh, this is about Maggie Nelson's uh, pregnancy and uh, family life because her partner in this book is uh, transitioning. He has a fluid gender, genderly fluid. I'm not that knowledgeable about gender fluidity as you can tell so uh, maybe this will answer some questions that I have and if not I'm sure it will be a fascinating read nonetheless because this is a topic that isn't covered in books all that much or at least not the books that I come across so this definitely piqued my interest when I saw it a book that piqued my interest like a year ago when I heard about it on a Guardian podcast or maybe a BBC4 podcast and that's The Outrun by Amy Liptrot. Amy Liptrot grew up in uh, Orkney which is a very remote Scottish island I think but as one does uh, she got bored of, of living there and uh, moved to uh, London as where she developed a serious addiction and almost lethal addiction to drugs and alcohol and in order to yeah to just get rid of that addiction she moved back to Orkney and tried to find um, herself again and find a connection with nature which is probably a good place to do in Orkney because uh, I googled some pictures and yeah nature is all there is there. In a book that is so weird that I tried to explain it to someone who was with me when I bought it but I just didn't succeed so I'm just going to read you the blurb from this and uh, that's Sudden Dead by Alvaro Enrique who is a Mexican writer and yeah blurb. A brutal tennis match in Rome. Two formidable opponents, the wild Italian painter Michelangelo and the loutish Spanish poet Francisco de Quevedo. Galileo, St. Matthew and Mary Magdalene heckle from the sidelines. In England, Thomas Cromwell and Henry VIII execute Anne Boleyn, and her executioner transforms her legendary locks into the most sought-after tennis balls of all time. Across the ocean in Mexico, the last Aztec emperors play their own games as Herman Cortes and his Mayan translator and lover scheme and conquer, fight and fuck, not knowing that their domestic comedy will change history. Over the course of one dazzling tennis match, through assassinations and executions, carnal liaisons and papal dramas, artistic and religious revolutions, love and war, sudden death tells the grand adventure of the clash of empires and the dawn of the modern era. Make of that what you will, but I'm definitely interested. And then finally, a book that I saw on so many booktube channels and heard so many great things about. I, I think that every video by Lauren of Lauren and the Books features this book, so when I saw it, finally, after yeah, mon weeks, months of not seeing it anywhere in other bookshops, I bought The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. And I'm sure that everyone knows what this is about, so I'm not going to go on about it. But I just want to say that I have it, and I want to read it. Okay. So those were the one, two, three, four, five, nine books that I bought in Brussels the other day. Uh, a lot of books that were on my to-read list for quite some time now, which I'm so glad that I finally found and can read. I'm in a bit of a reading slump, so I'm hoping that this pile of books will get me out of it, and if not, they'll look nice on my shelves. Uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!